Hello everyone, this is the fifth part in our series of tutorial videos for the EM Solver. In the previous videos, we introduced the main keywords and concepts required to understand and to run an eddy current problem, with the application being metal forming. In this video, we will introduce a few tricks and a few tips uh, to perhaps optimize your analysis, or at least fine-tune it. In the previous parts, uh, we saw that the EM solver uses a so-called FEM-BEM method in order to solve for those electromagnetic metal forming applications. And then one point uh, that we really insisted upon, one of the consequences of using this BM method in order to solve you know, the interaction between the conductors, was that the recomputation of the BM matrices uh, you know, takes some time. It has a high computational cost. So, uh, you know, we said that you can't really expect to do it at every time step and the user uh, needs to compromise between accuracy and efficiency. But there are, you know, a few ways to improve a bit uh, on the speed without sacrificing too much accuracy. Uh, and this is what we'll talk about now. One way uh, of reducing the size of the BM matrices uh, is simply, uh, well, to have less faces or less surface elements that are part of that BM mesh. For example, uh, let's take our metal forming example. Most of the magnetic field and its influence is concentrated between the workpiece and the coil. The magnetic field on the upper part of the workpiece is most likely very weak and will therefore have a very limited impact on the results. Therefore, you know, you could consider, you know, removing the upper faces of the workpiece from the BM uh, and, you know, not suffer too much and uh, it wouldn't make a big difference. And so the way, if you wanted to do that, the way to do that is by building a segment set on the surface uh, of the conductor and then telling the solver, please remove the faces of the segment set, uh, of this particular segment set from the BM system. And so the keyword uh, is called EM boundary and the user specifies the segment set ID and the boundary type. And then uh, the boundary type, you know, you set it to nine, which means remove those faces from the BM. Nine is, you know, uh, side note here. Mine is the only B type possible. Um, in the past, there were other options. That's why we have just we have B type equals nine, but now they don't exist anymore. They were all rendered obsolete. So again, uh, in summary, the first way to reduce the size of the BM system uh, is to remove the faces that have weak or no contribution. Of course, you know uh, this implies that the user has a perfect understanding uh, of his application. Uh, otherwise, he risks to just uh, output wrong results. A second way of reducing the size of the BM system um, is to remove terms from the BM matrices, making it faster to build and solve. In other words, uh, you make the matrix lighter. There are two BM matrices. You, know, you can check that uh, uh, in the theorem manual for more details. They are called matrix P and matrix Q. And it is possible to change the relative tolerance of the P and Q matrices when doing low rank approximations. So you can check the keyword, which is called EM solver BM mat. Consequently, if you lower those tolerance values, it will add, add more terms to the matrices, you know, um, weaker terms, um, making, them, making the whole solve more accurate, because you get more terms in your matrix. Uh, but it's also more stable, which is an interesting property, uh, because you have less convergence issues. You know, uh, this might be in especially interesting, for example, um, when you have uh, a complex geometry where, uh, for, for the BM mesh, where there are, for example, faces that are very close to one another. Uh, in that case, you would consider perhaps a lower, lowering those values. It would slow the run down, but it might also uh, increase the stability. And then conversely, higher tolerance values will make lighter systems, which will result in a faster BEM assembly time and therefore a faster solve, especially in cases where the BM mesh is big. Uh, in other words, in cases uh, that have a fine mesh. If, if the mesh that you've chosen is, is uh, relatively coarse, then those, those tolerance values won't make a big difference. But if your mesh is very fine, then yes, you might consider touching uh, those default values. And then one uh, quick final remark. Um, P is a symmetric matrix, uh, Q is not. And then Q is expressed on the edges, uh, whereas P is expressed on the nodes. Um, and, you know, there's twice as many edges as nodes, uh, which means that uh, Q is a bigger matrix than, than, than P. So uh, reducing the tolerance for, for Q is costlier than for P. 
Now let us talk a little bit about the time step. The EM solver is implicit, so technically it should be unconditionally stable, you know, regardless of the time step. Now it might therefore be tempting to just use a slightly EM or higher EM time step uh, to speed up the calculation. Uh, yes, that's that may be a good idea, but uh, I would advise a little bit of caution here. Uh, we have come to realize that our current method uh, that was coupling the FEM and VM system uh, had for consequence that the EM time step can't be a lot higher than the time step given by the CFL condition, especially in problems that have high deformations. So you might be able to bring it up a notch, you know, it depends on the application uh, and the run you know, would still be stable, uh, but not a whole order of magnitude, maybe 1.5, maybe twice as high, but not 10 times higher. And the other thing is that uh, having a higher time step may also mean more iterations to converge, uh, so a higher computational cost per time step. So having a time step this twice as high, for example, uh, even if the run is stable, it wouldn't result in a run that goes twice as fast, okay? because you need more iterations per time step. So uh, you need to watch for that as well. Uh, so yeah, in summary, you can, uh, it is possible to play with the value of the EM time step. Uh, it will, you know, um, improve the solving time, but uh, you need to use some caution there. The next point I'd like to make is how to better monitor the EM analysis. Um, there's this keyword, very useful keyword, which is called EM output. It's widely used uh, in all EM runs. If you put the four first flags to two, it will output information in both the message file and the terminal uh, about your EM analysis. For example, that's what you see here on this slide, on the right, uh, when it's assembling the matrices. It tells you at which stage it is. It has built 10% of the matrix, 20%, and so forth. It also outputs the number of iterations that were needed to solve the FEM-BM system. That's what you see below there. You have, uh, in this example, we have three iterations uh, for this time step. If you see, you know, that this number is increasing or that the residual values are increasing, uh, it's those percent values there that you see, then you know that something's up and that the run will most likely blow up. So it's a very good piece of information to monitor. Okay, make sure that you achieve convergence, uh, check how many time steps there are uh, and uh, what are the consequences of, for example, lowering the tolerances uh, or using a higher or a lower time step. Finally, at the end of the EM run, there is a time output in the message file, um, and that can give important indication, uh, some important indications uh, on where most of the solving time is spent. So here, for example, it's a typical uh, EM run. You see that the EM part takes 98% of the solving time. Okay, but look, the BM matrix assembly um, takes about 67% of the time, and uh, compared to that, the FEM matrices is only 4% of the time. So CBM uh, matrices really take up most of the, most of the solving time. Um, and then here, the data conversion in the E3 plot format, it's only 1% uh, of the time. It's what you see there, uh, Femstead to uh, the Steiner. Uh, and then the EM solve itself, it's only 22%. So really, um, the assembly of the BM matrices uh, is the costliest part. So uh, it may be worth you know, investigating a little bit on where you could save some time. So uh, I don't have a lot more to show you here in this example, um, just uh, a couple of remarks. If you look at the standard input vector, which you can find on the Dyna examples website for this uh, problem, this metal forming problem, uh, you will see that the BM mesh, you know, for part number three, which is this MS shell number three, uh, only has the bottom part, the bottom surface, and not the complete surface of the workpiece, if you look at the conductor T here. Uh, that's because of the EM boundary keywords that uh, exclude those faces. If you, you know, remove those keywords, you will get this kind of MS shell, okay, the, with the, the complete surface. Uh, and then if you run both cases, uh, you can check it, uh, look at the timers there, and you will see that for the BM matrix is set up, uh, this, it took 600 seconds for this run, you know, 15 minutes complete uh, run time. And by removing those faces, uh, this reduces the system um, the system computational uh, solve, you know, the solving time to 8 minutes and 40 seconds uh, with only 368 seconds uh, in the BM system. So, uh, you know, we save almost half the computational time. And uh, if you take a look at the results, you'll see that it won't change the displacements much, you know, by uh, less than 5%. Um, so see, this is just to illustrate, to show you how powerful this EM boundary keyword can be um, if the user you know, has a good knowledge of his problem and uh, knows what he's doing. Uh, 
right, so I think that with that we have covered uh, most keywords and concepts uh, that are behind the most uh, early current problems. Please uh, those that you can see on the website. Uh, so again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you for our next video.